Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is, well this is J&R Woodworking with a little bit of Jim's Fix-It Shop. So I want to talk to you and show you a machine I built about uh, 23, 24 years ago. I was into building all my machines for my shop as I was getting it set up. And I want to talk about one particular piece that I made. Um, one of the guys at our shop was a Boy Scout leader and he had a bunch of Boy Scouts and one year they made birdhouses to put up out in the I guess residential areas but they forgot to do one thing on the birdhouse and he got a hold of me and said you know what can we do and uh, what they did is when they built the back of the birdhouse they didn't leave it longer than the house so they had no way to screw it to the trees and fence posts. So he came up with this idea. He gave me a pattern. This is a Boy Scout insignia. And from that, I made this pattern. Now I cut this out on the bandsaw. And it probably took me, oh, I'd say a good half hour to get this cut out and sanded so it looked exactly how I wanted it to be. Now these patterns, he came over with uh, a couple sheets of plywood. He said, uh, I need 40 some of these. Well, I certainly didn't plan on making 40 of them on the bandsaw. So I used my machine I built. Now his job, after we got all these pieces ripped up and cut to size, we cut them the width and the height of this pattern. We drilled the two holes through this pattern at the bottom where he was going to mount it to the birdhouse. One hole up here where they're going to mount it to the tree. So the holes aren't going to hurt your pattern. Then he cut up all these blanks and his job was screw this pattern on the blank. I cut the first one out. We took them apart. We took that piece and drilled it for clearance holes. And we had to chamfer it because you don't you can't have the head sticking down. So now he's got two patterns. His job was to screw it to a blank and screw the other one to the blank. When I get done cutting it, he takes the pattern off, screws it to another blank piece of plywood, and gives it to me. Well, there was points where I had to wait for him to catch up because this machine will cut these things faster than he could unscrew them and screw them back together. Now, I've got some other patterns laying out here I've used over the years. Uh, this was a garden angel. You can see the profile of the face. Uh, I've got my rocking horses that I build. Um, Harley Davidson signs. And I made a bunch of these. Christmas, uh, just joy and Merry Christmas. Now those, you don't want holes in the letters. So when I made the patterns, I made the letters with what I call a tab sticking down on the bottom and the top. You drill a hole through that and that's what you screw to the blank. Then when you cut this out, your piece will have this tab on it. Well, I try to place the tabs in a place where it's easy to cut it off on the bandsaw, stuff it in a belt sander, and it's, it's smooth. The O is that way. The Y is that way. Belt sander eats them right off. And the base, well, the base is going to have holes in it because you got to screw the letters on. So that doesn't matter. Now, um, another pattern. Let me grab that and show it to you. Kind of forgot about this one to dig it out. Now, I've sold a ton of these things. Uh, it's a clock. And one's a, little, one's a little girl and one's a boy. And this is the face pieces that go on. And again, as you can see, when I've got this cut out, I got the tabs down here where I can easily belt sand them off. 
and uh, you can see the screw holes in this one. This one's ready to be uh, sanded up a little bit, put together. Here's all the rest of the pieces that will be cut out of this board. But this machine I built is not a CNC router. I don't have that kind of money. You know, here's the masters to that. I worked in a, year, a wood shop years ago and I ran a pin router. Now this one I ran there was a huge machine and it would cut up to probably an inch and a half thick high density particle board. This one won't cut quite that fast or heavy. But these things I cut out in about less than 30 seconds a piece. And there's no sanding. It cuts that smooth. The cutter I use is a, I buy them through the shop when they go on sale in these catalogs. It's a two flute, high spiral, solid carbide end mill. And I put them in my router. Let me show you the machine and I'll explain to you how I built it. I gotta spin the camera around. I guess I'm gonna have to crunch down if you can see me. Now this is the pattern and this is the machine. I have a pin sticking up out of the table. I've made these inserts at work. I have four of them in mine so I can do different size pieces without hitting a column when I'm spinning it. The one I use the most is the one that's in the center because the the head isn't out on the arm as far and you don't get as much deflection. So I usually use the center one first. The pin sticks up a little less than what your pattern is thick. Because you don't want to hit the top of this pin with that carbide cutter. Basically it just cuts the top of the pin off. Because hey, I've done that a couple times. Well, let me swing this thing over here. It's an old cast iron craftsman radio arm saw. A friend of mine had this and he was using it when the bearings were bad. And I told him, look, we got to fix this thing. Let me tear it down. Because the bearings were so bad, it was letting the armature float back and forth along with the saw blade and you couldn't cut straight with it anyway. Well, it got to the point where the armature floated a little bit too far and grabbed the field windings and just made spaghetti out of them. So now the motor's toast. So what I did with it, let me see if I can zoom me in here a little bit. Now I stripped the motor down to everything but the outer shell. I had to drill out some rivets to get out the field windings and the iron, what they call the, the outer edge of the motor. Now after I did that, I made up a couple wooden discs that these screws go into out of some one inch thick ash that I had. And I cut them to fit inside of this housing. Then I stuck them on a lathe and I bored a hole through them the size of the router base. I slit them and I put a screw through them sideways to use them as a clamp to pinch the router base. So you can take this out anytime you want to. Now you line this up and move this again. When you put this back in place the router bit lines up exactly over top this pin. It has to be lined up right or as you go around the pin it's going to make a staggered cut. So you got to take your time and get it lined up. You got your pattern screwed to your blank piece of plywood or whatever you're going to use. You can even put it on a piece of plastic if you want to. You put the pattern down. That's why you have to make chamfers for the uh, screws. The heads can't stick out past the face. 
you just shove it in against that pin and just go around the pattern. And it will cut this out exactly the size and shape of your pattern. So you want to make your pattern look as good as you can and take some time with it because every piece you duplicate with this is going to be the same. And it'll cut that, I think we made this out of either 3 8 or half inch exterior plywood. And like I said, it was about a 20 to 25 second cut that went around here. The sides and the bottom were already cut. I just had to plunge in, do the shape, and plunge out, and I was done. No sanding. Very smooth. They painted it red, white, and blue. They put their troop number on it, and they hung up all their birdhouses. Let's go back over to the bench. Now, if you're interested in building one of these, go on Craigslist, buy yourself an old radio arm saw for $50 or $100. I think I've got a, well, this was a long time ago when I bought that router. I think I had $150 into that router because it is a half inch shaft or you can change the collet and use quarter inch. Whenever possible, I try to use a half inch because you get less deflection and vibration if you use a bigger router bit. Right now I have them quarter inch bits in there because they're so aggressive and they cut so fast it's, it's just unreal. I mean, I can run this and cut out these parts faster than anybody can on a CNC router. I'll guarantee it. Now, some of these other things, it's just it just makes the job so much easier and more enjoyable. If you want to build one of them and you're stuck on how to do it, send me an email. Take some pictures of the machine that you got. Uh, pictures always help, believe me. <clears throat> and I'll tell you how to tear the motor apart, how to make the spacers out of some kind of oak or ash, something hard, <clears throat> and how to mount the router in it. The little inserts at the table uh, to hold the pins. <clears throat> if you can't find somebody to make them, I can probably make some and sell them. Uh, the hole inside of the insert is a half inch and that's because the, usually the largest router bit I use is a half inch diameter. That way I can just put a straight pin in there. And uh, if I use smaller router bits like uh, 3 8 5 16 quarter inch, eighth, then I take the half inch pin and I turn the end down. Now if some patterns I want to leave some sanding stock on it. So what I'll do is I have pins, like for that quarter inch bit, that's 5, 10, and I think 15 thousandths smaller than the router bit. Or are they bigger? I guess they have to be bigger. That way, when you follow your pattern, it leaves the, pat the piece you're cutting bigger and gives you some sanding material if you want to sand it. But these bits cut so smooth, uh, I don't do much sanding at all. I just cut them out, put them together. If you're not subscribed, please do. Uh, it doesn't really help me as much as it helps you. Uh, people that are looking for videos, especially on the snapper build, uh, the model sitting over here, if they Google, uh, how can I fix my transmission in my snapper? What the computer searches for is videos with the most uh, people subscribe to them, the most views, and the most likes. Then it takes some videos and it shoots it to them. It gives them a choice of six or seven. Well, I need some subscribers. Uh, to date, I have over 30,000 views, and most of them are on the snapper build. If all them people would have subscribed, I'd be way over what I've got right now. 
The only problem is with the snapper build, once they watch the videos and they fix their snapper, they moved on and they don't ever come back. <laughs> so if you're out there and you're watching, subscribe. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. I'm not making any money on this. I just want to do it to help people. Uh, to date, I think I have a little over 400 emails that I have answered and helped people out. I think I have 200 and, I don't know, 45 subscribers. That just it's not balancing right. So come on, you guys, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. And if they ask you to enter your email address, all that's for is when I put a new video on, it notifies you. If you turn on the little bell, you don't have to have that on. And that doesn't cost you anything. So subscribe and help out everybody else out there that's trying to fix their snapper. Or make something like this. And I guess um, that's about it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, send me an email and tell me why so I can change it. And I guess that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Remember, keep your tools sharp, your shop dusty, and have a good time out there making something for your grandkids. Talk to you soon.